Greetings, good men. Uh, this is Apostle Jubal TV Vera here. And this morning I would like to share some positive thoughts from the Word of God from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Uh, in verse 5 it says, While you were yet dead in sin, He has purchased us, He has salvaged us from sin. So, in this letter, Apostle Paul made it clear that we were yet in sin. That means the salvation plan of God has been prepared in advance before you and I were brought into this world. Isaiah 46 verse 10 says that God began us with the end from the beginning. So that means God has foreseen everything. A new man will decide to fall. As such, God has come up with a plan to salvage us. Now, Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Ephesus, and he says, Even when we were dead in sins, it quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. So, this is something that you and I do not deserve, but it was by grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. God did it on our behalf, at His own expense, at His own cost which you and I cannot afford. So what God did was that He salvaged us. Now, how can we have access to that blessing? Now, to have access to that blessing is to understand the grace of God, to understand that God has saved us already. Even before we ask for forgiveness, God has already forgiven us. So as we come before God and confess our sins before Him, after confessing our sins before God and asking for forgiveness, we must also be consciously aware that He has already forgiven us. And let's thank Him for His forgiveness. Thank Him for His grace that they saved us while we were yet sinners. Now, as God saved us, these are thoughts that we need to buy into. So, as God saved us, now the next thing is that Apostle Paul said, He had raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has already raised us up. But the fact that we are not aware of it and we are yet living in sin, we were not raised to that position. But that position has already been guaranteed for us. It has already been there. And the moment we realize that we have sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God and we have come back to God and we have accepted His grace, accepted the salvation, accepted Christ as our salvation, now, automatically, there is a lifting taking place in the realms of the Spirit. And that lifting or that raising up has already been done. The moment we accept Jesus, that's the moment we activate. The moment we shift our mind to accepting the mind of Christ, that's the moment the lifting is taking place. You see, the word im in Greek is autos. And the word autos, the origin of that word is automatic. It derives from the word automatic. Auto means it has been programmed. And um, it moves. Things move. As you make the decision to go, you go. As you make the decision to sing, you sing. As you make a decision to laugh, you laugh, you see. Autos, in Him, in Christ, the moment we get in Him, the moment we accepted Him into our life, now, that which God has blessed us with, that which God has already raised us up, now it's been put into motion. I hope you get this. Now, when Apostle Paul said that he had raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, this is not a physical lifting. That the moment you accept Jesus, you'll start to float into the air. No, no, that's not, that's not that. What God meant was that the moment you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, in the realms of the Spirit, there is a lifting. That means we need to shift our mindset. We need to change the way we think. You see, before you accepted Jesus, you were a sinner. You lived in sin. The moment you accepted Jesus, no, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, anyone who is joined to Christ. Now, when you accepted Jesus, you are joined to Christ. When you are joined to Christ, that means your status has changed. Your location has changed now. You were a sinner before, but now you are joined to Christ. You have been relocated into Christ. Now, your location is Christ now. When your location is Christ, now you are not that old creature anymore. 
you have become a new creature. Now, I am explaining how God raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, that raising up is a matter of the mind. Now, you won't be physically be raised up, but you have to change the way you are thinking. And when you begin to change the way you are thinking, you are shifting yourself from a lower frequency of living in sin to a higher frequency of living with Christ in the heavenly places, you see. Many people today, they are confused about that. Yet they are saved, but they are saying that they are sinners. How can you be a sinner when you are already saved? How can you say that you don't have a ticket to Port Mosby when you, are, you have already bought a ticket and you go and beg for a ticket at the check counter? That doesn't make sense, you see. And that's the nonsense many believers are doing. So you see, when God says he has raised us up now, it is a matter of the mind that you must confess, you must be consciously aware, take the thought that now you are a new creature in him. You are no longer that old creature. You are no longer a sinner. You are in Christ Jesus. So automatically your status of change. Automatically God begins to raise you up now. And, and now that you are in him, and you are no longer a sinner, but you are a new creature, that means new genes are running through you. The blood of Jesus is running through you. The blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. According to Abel's 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood that speaks better things, it begins to run through your wings. You must be consciously aware, and you must confess that. You must add this to your Noah, within your Noah, that now you have the blood of Jesus, the red blood cells and the white blood cells, shells of Jesus running through your wings. Now, because the Spirit, in Romans 8 verse 11 says, He that has raised Christ from the dead has raised you up. And He that has raised Jesus from the grave, now He has rejuvenated your spirit. I want you to read Romans 8 verse 11. So if the same Spirit that has raised Jesus and that has rejuvenated the blood of Jesus, transformed the blood of Jesus into becoming the blood of God, now lives in us, it has rejuvenated, revitalized, changed all the cells within our body to becoming the blood of Jesus. Now these are the changes that take place. As you begin to be aware and consciously aware and impress the thought into your spirit, from your uh, consciousness, from your uh, mind, what happens is that you begin to shift yourself. The racing begins to take place. Now, you are no longer the old creature, but you have become the new creature in God. So as you begin to declare and decree that, it shall be established. It has already been established unto you. Now, as you begin to confess that you are a new creature, let's move further down to verse 21 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, For he had made him to be seen for us. You see, God has made Christ him, Otos. So Jesus has become sin for us who knew no sin. There is no sin in him. So, you see, the moment sin gets into Christ, it dissolves. And righteousness continues to exist. Him is autos. And God has made Christ sin. But we must understand that sin cannot live in Christ. Evil melts at the presence of the Lord, you see. So when, when sin lives in us, Sin finds a place to exist. It cannot dissolve. The only way it dissolves is that when we get in Christ. So the moment we change our location and we get in Christ, we accept Jesus into our life. Now Jesus has become sin for us. How did he become sin for us? There was an exchange that took place. And the exchange is that Apostle Paul said, For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. There is no sin in him. So when sin gets into him, sin dissolves and does not exist anymore. And we are in Christ. And his righteousness automatically becomes our righteousness. That's why Apostle Paul further went to say that, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, you see. Now, you cannot be made the righteousness of God in your church, in your ministry, in whatever you we claim that if we wear this, and if we wear this outfit, and if we look like this, and dress like that, and talk like that, we're going to become righteous now. This is a thing of the mind. We have to follow the pattern of Christ. Think like Christ. Talk like Christ. Do things like Christ did. Now, so Jesus has become sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God. And we have become the righteousness of God. Now, you must not 
say I am a sinner. Oh God, I'm sorry that I am a sinner. No, if you are consciously aware of that, that means your status have not changed. You have not been relocated from being a sinner to being in Christ. You see, we must understand that to be in Christ that means your location has changed. Now that we are in Christ, now we have been made the righteousness of God. We have become the righteousness of God. So every time you come to God, say, Father, I thank you that I am the righteousness of God. It is not my righteousness that made me become righteous, but it is the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you that every day I am becoming righteous. Why? Because you have taken all my sins. You have exchanged it. And there is a transaction that took place. When, when a transaction has took, taken place, you won't go back and say, that's my money. But that's my product. If you're selling a product for money, and when there, there is a transaction that took place and you have exchanged that product for that money, you won't go back to the buyer and tell them, hey, please, I want my product back. You can get your money back. Oh, I'll keep the money and give me the product back. No, that won't happen. When a transaction is taking place, it has already been taken place. That means that that status of that product, if you are selling a product, you have already attained money. If you are buying a product, then... That money is no longer yours, but it has been converted into that product. Now, that product is your new status, or that money is your new status. Likewise, when Jesus took all our sins, he has become sin. But bear in mind that sin does not exist in him. So, sin ceased in him. But for us, righteousness has been a change for us. Now, our status has changed from being a sinner to becoming a righteous man and woman in God, in him. Him is autos. automatically we adopt the righteousness of God because we are in Him. We are not outside of Him. The fact that people say that they are sinner because they are not consciously aware that they are in God. And it is His righteousness that made us become righteous. So, the moment you begin to declare that, now, we allow God in the realms of the Spirit to shift our spirit from being a sinner to being um, raised with Christ being seated with him in the heavenly places. The heavenly places, the heavenly realm, is a realm of the mind. It's a shifting that takes place from a lower level of thinking to a higher level of thinking. Now, there, there are other scriptures that we can uh, take a look at to, to confirm and affirm the shifting that take, take place. Now, if we go to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, it says that, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake, for our sake, it became poor that you, through his poverty, might be rich. You see? So there was another transaction that took place. That Jesus took our poverty and exchanged it for his righteousness. And mind you, again, because Jesus is so rich, that poverty finds no place to exist in him. So when poverty gets into him, it becomes rich. And now, because we are in Him, we become rich by His grace. These are things that we do not purchase with our hard work. We have no merits to, to acquire that, but it is by God's grace that we acquire His riches. Now, rich does not mean only in money and material things, but you can be rich in health, in wealth, in abundance, in sound mind, in prosperity, in in, 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 in in so many things in life you can become rich now you can accumulate riches in in all aspects of life because there was a transition took place don't go back and say I am poor I have nothing I cannot make it in life if you are saying that that means you do not know your position in Christ you are not aware that you have become a new creature you are not aware of the transition that took place the moment you have accepted Jesus into your life. You are not aware of the benefits that comes with that decision. The benefits that comes with the decision that you make. And the benefits that comes with that, that decision are all bought by grace. Bought by the blood of Jesus. Because Hebrews 12, 24 says, The blood speaks better things than that of Abel. Now there is a lot of things that we can talk about. But these are some that I, I want to express to you. So that you are aware of the lifting. So when it says, when the Bible says he has raised us up, God has raised us up, not by going to church, not by attending activities, not by attending conferences, not by attending meetings. Now, 
is raises up in our mind. Study the word, get the word, put it in our heart, and allow those words to shift us up. So as people are saying, I am sick. They are saying, I am healthy. Why? Because Jehovah lives in now, that doesn't mean the sick won't come. Sick will come, but you will continue to rise above it. Sickness and disease. Poverty will come, but you will continue to rise above it. Lack will come, but you will continue to rise above, above it because you will know within you, know one that you are in him. And if you are in him, there is no lack in him. There is no struggle in him. Uh, there is no poverty in God. There is no sickness and disease in God. There is no struggle in God. Now, always... Maintain the level of thinking. When we say we have the mind of Christ, that's what it means to continuously affirm and confess know, within your Noah that you have the mind of Christ. You think, talk, act like Christ. Nothing of this world will shake you from the foundation because when Christ becomes the foundation, is the solid rock that most builders have rejected because they love their own ideas. They love their own doctrines. They love what other people have taught them rather than believing what Christ has taught us. God has raised us up and made us sit with Christ in the heavenly places. How to sit with Christ in the heavenly places. Get these words, store them in your heart, confess them and let it become part of your genosis, your gnosis, your knowledge. Let it become part of your epigenosis. Once it becomes your epigenosis, you will not cite it, but it will bubble out from your spirit because now you are in him. We have become one with the Father. Thank you very much and you have a blessed day. This is Apostle Jobal Tivewewewe here signing out. Bye for now. Remain blessed going and coming out knowing that your God and my God is too much. Your problem, your circumstance, your situation is nothing compared to this God. Thank you and bye for now.